all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the channel folks reed shepherd should have been the first overall pick in the nba draft in my opinion fortunately he fell onto the houston rockets lap at pick number three from the university of kentucky he is a combo guard he's six foot 387 pounds and it's really fascinating because when the college basketball season began kentucky had so many different players that nba scouts were just like fawning over they were oozing Eh, it sounds a little weird, but you get the point here. Reed Shepard was not on that list. He was never on that list to start the season. But now he just got drafted, pick number three, to the Houston Rockets. Now, there's a lot of debate going on about which type of player he projects to be in the NBA, whether that's, you know, a... a Maybe a slightly better offensive version of Dante DiVincenzo, Kirk Heinrich. Um, I don't love either of those comparisons. I think he's his own player. And in general, I think he's going to help out this Houston. Like whether he was drafted at pick three or 33, he's going to help out the Houston Rockets so much in his rookie season. And we're going to talk about why and how and all that fun stuff in today's video. But before we do, if you guys enjoy it, be sure to hit that like button, hit that sub button. If you try and get this video to 200 likes, that would mean the absolute world to me. So the Houston Rockets are one of these teams that's just flying under the radar. They only won, and I'm using air quotes. You can't see me. I'm using air quotes. They only won four. 41 games last season guys this was like historically one of the worst teams ever in steven silas's coaching era so they hire Ime Udoka. They bring in some vets like Freddie Double V, Rockford's finest. They bring on over guys like Dylan Brooks, defensive mentality, chip on their shoulder, and they won 41 games despite Alperen Shangun being injured, Jalen Green having a poor first half, Tari Eason only playing like 25% of the games. And the big, you know, like nitpick with Houston right now is why aren't they making moves for Mikel Bridges? Why, why didn't they trade for Mikel? Why aren't they interested in KD? Why didn't they make a move for Paul George? What a lot of people actually, this is non-Reed Shepard related, what a lot of people don't realize the Rockets did last year was they traded for Steven Adams as their freaking backup center. They just drafted Reed Shepard third overall. They've got Tari Eason coming back after missing literally 60 plus games. Um, the Rockets roster, here's their projected starters. Freddie, Jalen Green, Dylan Brooks, Jabari Smith Jr., Elper Shangoon, and then your bench, Amon Thompson, Reed Shepard, Cam Whitmore, Tari Eason, Stephen Adams. And if you want to get a little bit deeper, new addition, A.J. Griffin, Jay Sean Tate, freaking legend jeff green and jacques landell and they just picked up aaron holiday so the roster is set right here but reed shepherd is really intriguing to me because like i'll just say it out loud here he's white you know he's white and he just got drafted third overall in the stats it, like people view him as like an athletic Steph Curry, is it? Uh, Reed Shepard is the first top three pick to average two and a half or more steals per game since 1999. Folks, that's 25 freaking years ago. I'm also about to turn 25, which makes this uh, even more crazy. But nonetheless, you can watch games like Mississippi State where Reed Shepard, Reed Shepard hit the game-winning buzzer beater. Uh, he went 32 points, seven assists five rebounds two steals two blocks 11 of 14 from the field four and four of seven from downtown reed shepherd is the definition of efficient and nba scouts love this dude and what was so crazy in his year at kentucky is he wasn't supposed to be this efficient for this long like the kentucky season begins and reed shepherd's you know throwing up stats he's being efficient he's playing defense he's doing literally everything he's emerging as kentucky's literal best freaking player and the consensus was like all right well let's you know wait and see how long this can sustain and it lasts the whole freaking season guys reed shepherd broke the college record for the highest single three-point percentage from a player drafted in the first round ever 52.1 percent from downtown on over four threes guys nba range threes took 81 attempts made 49 and a half of them catch and shoot threes 51 and a half unguarded catch and shoot threes 57 and a half guarded catch and shoot threes 46 percent corner threes 52 percent the houston rockets literally just got the best shooter 
in the entire NBA draft. The best shooter in the NBA draft. So one big thing that concerns even non-Rocket fans before they, they drafted Reed Shepard was, all right, well, Reed Shepard, you know, 6'3", he's not the biggest dude. Uh, that's an undersized backcourt. Freddie Double V, you got Jalen Green, JG4 back there. Reed Shepard's small. Well, folks, defense is mainly effort, and they teach you this in, like, you know, freaking youth basketball in fourth grade. They, they teach you. Defense is mainly effort, and obviously, you know, there's more that goes into it. But Reed Shepard is the definition of a gritty defensive player. He gets steals. He gets blocks. He just plays good defense. Yeah, he's a little undersized. But look at a guy like Freddie Double V, 5'11". Fred Van Vliet is a 5'11". Reed Shepard, 6'1". Was he 6'3 with shoes? <laughs> he's going to be just fine. But once again, when we look at the overall outlook of the Houston Rockets, Reed Shepard starting this upcoming season isn't the primary concern. When I do my Rocket podcast and my Rocket live streams, everyone's so concerned about pain. They have this, you know, quote unquote, young core seven, and it consists of guys like Jalen Green, Jabari Smith Jr., Alpern Shangoon, Amon Thompson. Now you got Reed Shepard, Cam Whitmore, and Tari Eason. Folks, if you have to pay all seven of those guys a hefty number, that is a really good freaking problem to have. But even thinking, you know, like the, the blend of him working with Fred in the backcourt defensively, this is like at least one year ahead. Reed Shepard will be coming off of the bench. He will it probably actually won't be the sixth man because Tari Eason should have that role. Reed Shepard will play 25 minutes minimum this upcoming season if he translates immediately to the NBA, which I don't know why he wouldn't. But everybody expects these. And I think Amon Thompson is even a really good example. Now, Amon was a, a lot more raw coming out of the G League, didn't play college basketball. Uh, but it, it's just a good example of a dude who, like, injuries happen. Houston Rocket fans know this. Like, Amon Thompson had, like, 20 starts last season. Cam Whitmore had a couple of starts. Uh, everybody's so worried about minutes. Folks, the cream always rises to the top. And the good news is the Houston Rockets have a bunch of talent. Young, middle, older guys like Stephen Adams that aren't even really that old. Um, Reed Shepard is going to find minutes and he's going to fit perfectly on the Houston Rockets roster, in my opinion, short term, mid term and long term. So that's it for today. That's all I got planned. I hope you guys have slash had a phenomenal 4th of July. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And I do just want to say real quick, I do like a Let's Talk Rockets podcast where I do like three, four live shows a week, but I do post them on Spotify and Apple. I'll throw that link down below. But thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button. We'll see you soon.